how has going from analog to digital, you know, have you adapted or you still have the same philosophy as far as performance? No, I don't and, actually have the same philosophy yeah. anymore. I find now that I, f I find now I'm not, I like to use Pro Tools as a tape machine. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, um, I'm very clear about that. And that's what I, I mean, I don't have a lot of plugins. Mm -hmm. um, but I d and I and so I use it as a tape machine, and I like the flexibility of using it as a tape machine and being able to edit between entire takes mm. and getting a feeling and edit between entire takes. But then, on another side, as a producer, I also like to craft a record, and so I like to be part of crafting the record. And every producer is different and brings different things to the table. And that's what I like to do. I enjoy that aspect of it. I enjoy being creative. I enjoy mm -hmm. um, crafting. And yeah. so I like the idea that when the musicians are all gone, if I want to change something in the pre-chorus or want to sh double up the length of something, mm -hmm. I can do that. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for you know individual instrumentation. I can try things, and if they don't work, I try, you know, I, I try out my ideas in my mind on, you know, on those things, and and um, and I'm being fortunate enough to work with artists that have enjoyed that mm -hmm. input. Yeah, and, I, um, I, I can imagine sometimes, especially you start, you know, editing Led Zeppelin, you there could be resistance. <laughs> there's resistance. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there are, there is repair work done and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, n not all the members of the band want to know about that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, making making the sausage. <laughs> yeah. Do we used to, when we w we worked at Sam West and Jimmy would be upstairs, and he'd come downstairs and say, "What are you doing?" And I'd say, "Well, I'm just working on this thing over here. I just um, repaired this one uh, guitar thing." He's like, "Don't do that. Let me hear it." <laughs> and then I'd play it to him. He goes, "Let me hear how it was," and I'd play it back to him. He said, "Let's hear what you did to it." And then you listen back, you go, I'm going upstairs to smoke. And he goes, <laughs> like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> that's funny. If it sounds better, that's good, but I just don't want to know. That's it's like, funny. if you did any repairs, yeah. I don't know about yeah. it. That's how we were. We, well, we were, won't tell anybody no. either. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's history, you know. It's, that's it's, cool. It's, 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 well, that's, it's, it's always good when you can make a performance better. It's an entertainment package. Exactly. It's, if you want a documentary, then go to the gig or something. Yeah. But it's like, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's different. It, it, I, you know, get a bootleg. There's bootlegs out there with full of all of, yeah. you know, the mistakes and the warts and whatever. Mm -hmm. But as an entertainment package, if I want to put on a piece of music time and again, you don't need to hear someone slipping off that bar. Or, right. You know, if the string breaks, there's one obvious one in in uh, the Zeppelin DVD where that great fanfare that m marks the end of the solo on Stairway to Heaven, mm -hmm. he always did, 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 did. Mm -hmm. he goes up high and he does that fanfare right. right at the end of the solo. If you watch that performance on uh, DVD, uh, which I think is from uh, Earl's Court, mm -hmm. um, the high string breaks. And so he has to go and play the fanfare down, a, <laughs> down an octave. Not the same. Not the same. No. So, you know, I've taken the liberty of pinching the fanfare from another performance and putting it on there and so but if you look you can see that it's just it's played an octave down but sounds yeah. an octave up but you know you're watching this is it's an entertainment exactly. thing you know it's exactly. you know moving forward to your you know current production so you're it sounds like you're more hands-on than hands-off production approach yeah i'm a hands-on <laughs> guy uh you know i'm a hands-on guy uh it's you know it's my passion mm -hmm. apart from everything else mm -hmm. um and also it's the way i like to hear records so mm -hmm. you know I, I i mean yesterday i was looking at listening to someone's work i heard this guy's a genius he look hear what he's done with this band and i went to go and hear this band and it's like punky stuff that i would never listen to in mm -hmm. raw and 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 that, that's not what I like, you know. Mm -hmm. I like to have a crafted product, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I'm part of that. Yeah, making that. Yeah. And well, that is the the P in production, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the why. Yeah. That's the gig, you know, in a perfect world. And yeah, and uh, <clears throat> you know, I did a record with uh, these guys called Black Country Communion. Oh yeah, which oh. Um, 
uh, these guys. These guys. <laughs> you want to tell tell everyone who those guys well, are? <laughs> you know, I, I went to go and see. Um, I've been working with this uh, Joe Bonamassa mm -hmm. uh, guy, a um, great blues guitar player for years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I really went to go and see him when he was playing a very small club uh, uh, on a night out from opening for BB King. Mm -hmm. And we've since managed to, you know, uh, we he's worked very hard. He's on the road all the time. And between him and I, we've managed. We've done eight, I think, records together so far. But he's becoming somewhat of a superstar in his yeah, in, his, in his world. I mean, how old is he now? Shows thirty. Two, I think. Wow, he, he started off incredibly young. Yeah, 12. Yeah, that's like, yeah. he, yeah, he blew me away the first time I heard him. Yeah, yeah. and so, uh, you know, I went to go and see Joe, and Glenn mm -hmm. Hughes came, who used to sing with Deep Purple, mm -hmm. stood up and played a song, and I, and I went backstage afterwards, and I'm like, let's, we got to do something, yeah. that was too good. <laughs> let's put a little group together. So, we called, uh, some other hacks, Jason Bonham, <laughs> who I'd worked with before, <laughs> And a great keyboard player from uh, Dream Theater, Derek Sherinian, oh, who I've yeah. known for years. Yeah. And we put them together. And then I, they were, everyone was kind of skeptical. And I booked the studio down the road. And we just booked two days. And I had mm -hmm. everyone come into the studio. And that was uh, Shangri-La? Shangri-La, yeah, yeah, yeah. just down the road here. And they came in for two days and no one had heard anything. Joe, well, Joe and, uh, and Glenn had written nuggets of ideas. And so we cut it all in bits and pieces. It's like, okay, we're going to try that, that. Mm -hmm. And then they all went away and... In the evenings, I cut it all up together when I was working on an Iron Maiden album in the Bahamas and I had time to spare, so I put my headphones on and my laptop and I edited it all up and and uh, that's how this record came about. But that was really a crafted record. Yeah. You know, it's interesting to say, interesting to see like 10,000 reviews about and you can hear these guys are all playing live. Well, they are playing live. <laughs> yeah. It's not just they weren't playing quite as you hear them. <laughs> exactly. But that's why no one needs to well, know that's, that. That's stuff. the beauty of, you know, using it as, a, as a recording medium and as an editing tool. Exactly. You're getting the best of each performance. Exactly. Super glue and you're in business. And all rough mixes at the end yeah. of the day. So, uh, yeah, going back to, to working with Joe, because... The last record for sure you did in um, in Greece, right? Right. And so now you're starting to piss me off. Yeah, uh, we Iron did Maiden the, in Bahamas. Right. We did the last two records. I see a pattern here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> no, the truth is, like the truth is, with Joe, uh, you know, I, he has a band mm. uh, and, and 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 tech staff and all that that mm -hmm. have to travel with him. So if we got to be some, I mean, I, you know what it's like with budgets. Mm -hmm. I'm given a budget, and they go, "There's your budget for making mm -hmm. the record." By the way, that includes air, hotels, everything, exactly. mastering, to deliver us an album, and that's your budget. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, you know. It was finer back in the day when you could make some money on on royalties mm -hmm. on records that sold. Now you can have records that go to number one and sell, you know, fifty thousand records. Right. But it's and that, that's it for that album. But um. So we get b fixed budgets now, and so it's about, you know, A, how do you want to live your life, mm -hmm. and B, how do I make this work? Mm -hmm. If I bring that band to L.A., mm -hmm. it's tough for me to find a studio under 1500 bucks for Definitely, the day. Yeah. If I go to Nashville, I can find a studio for 600 bucks a day. Mm -hmm. But who wants to spend a month in Nashville? Yeah. Not me. Some people <laughs> do, but uh, I don't. Yeah. And so we go to the Greek islands, and we buy, you know, we can rent a, um, a residential studio mm -hmm. for a little bit more money than that, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's like under two thousand, maybe two thousand U.S. dollars a day. But we have seven bedrooms, and we have a studio. Plus, we're on Santorini, which is my favorite place on earth. Uh, plus, the band was all in Europe anyway. Oh, wow. So I didn't have to fly anyone there. They just got domestic flights from, you know, Italy, it's fifty bucks. So it ends up costing me a lot less to make a record there yeah. i get to pay my mortgage which has been impossible on these records up until now <laughs> exactly and uh and at the same time you know i have and we get it's it's great and a, an artist like joe mm -hmm. is you know what's really cool now is that he has his own label mm -hmm. so he doesn't have the radio promo person telling mm -hmm. calling to tell you you know mix suggestions for in order to get it on the on, on the rec, on the radio and you don't have a and R people telling you what they think is a better chorus, or mm -hmm. you know whether it's a better. I mean, Joe can do what he likes to do, mm -hmm. but we get to do whatever we want. And when you know, part of um, uh, our talking over the years has been let's 
you know, let's let's open it up. Yeah. Keep playing the blues, but well, let's you know, let's let the world in. So we mm -hmm. bring Greek instruments in. We bring in a great bouzouki player. And we bring in a great clarinet player. And th those in, are local cats. And right? local cats. Yeah. They got the ferry over from Athens and came wow. to Santorini and spent two nights and got drunk and played some some you know guitar and. And there was a language barrier, yeah. Uh, but it was great, you know. Music, and I yeah. end up calling up the sections in Greek. I go Alpha, Vita, Gamma, <laughs> and Vita, Vita, Vita. So, and that was really fun. And we sat outside. We recorded outside. It was so quiet. We put Man. microphones outside. It was it was heavenly. Yeah. You know, it was really wonderful. And you came up with one of my favorite titles ever. Which Athens was? To Ath Athens. Athens to Athens. <laughs> oh, cool is that? Athens to Athens. That was, that's, uh, that's, that's my title. Dude, that's brilliant, man. Yeah, he had a he had a song, uh, he had the song, which was basically a, a, a take on uh, a Raikuda tune, Cherry Ball, uh, ch ch uh, Cherry Tomato Blues or something, mm -hmm. just, uh, Cherry Ball Blues something, and so he had um, the bazooki player follow him on on the lick. But the song didn't do enough for me without words, so I said, "You've got to put some words to the song." And uh, he was, was, is, still is, continues to whatever the story is. No one wants to know. Pine over a girl from Athens, Georgia. Oh, it's funny. So we had Athens, Greece in the house, and <laughs> Athens, Georgia, and I was like, "You want to write about her like you've done on the last two records?" And we were in Greece, so it became Athens to Athens. That's good.